Veracruz State, Mexico has numerous charming towns, incredible archaeological sites, lush jungles, and cities brimming with culture. So why is almost no one traveling? Is it a dangerous part of Mexico? No. Is it lacking amazing places to visit? Well, definitely not. I loved traveling in Veracruz, so let me show you why I think this part of Mexico is underrated. Veracruz is this unusually elongated state along the Gulf Coast. My plan is to visit the capital, Jalapa, the volcanic jungle lake of Catamaco, and the spectacular pre-Columbian ruins of El Tají. Right away, my first destination on this trip is one of the most important archaeological sites in all of Mexico. My first thought upon arriving at El Tajin was, wow, this is an incredible place. My second thought was, where is everyone? Am I the only one here? Okay, there was this security guard and a couple of other visitors, but it really did feel like I had this monumental site virtually to myself. El Tajin is quite mysterious because no one knows who built this city. It's not the Aztecs, it's not the Mayans who were in another region, but it is believed to be a civilization that existed before the Aztecs. And one thing they do know is that they loved to decorate their buildings. And they built them in a unique style using lots of niches. Here you can see these niches very well, so they create a, a kind of a pattern of dark and light. There are numerous structures here. There's like temples, 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 temples everywhere. And they've only excavated about 50% of, of what they think there that was here. Uh, they think 20,000 people lived in this city at one point. It's pretty crazy. They've also found pigment on um, a lot of the kind of decorative elements of these temples so they believe that actually so now now we're looking at it and it's kind of just stone colored but it used to be like blue imagine that little is known about the El Tajin civilization but one thing they do know is that they loved ball games usually at these sites there is a ball game court where ritualistic games were played and sure enough they found one here and then another and another and another in total, 20 ball game courts were found, which is the most ever at a site like this. While El Tajin is relatively unknown among tourists today, it actually was completely unknown for a very long time as well, and basically discovered by accident. The Spanish, when they conquered uh, Mexico, called it New Spain, they didn't know about it for the longest time. It was all covered in jungle until Around the year 1800, some administrator went around here and went looking for illegal tobacco plantations that I guess were not paying taxes or something like that. So this administrator went through here and was like, huh, hang on, what is this pyramid shaped thing here? What is this mound? And then they started, you know, digging around and then they were like, oh my God, there's just a lost city. As interesting as it was to learn about this ancient civilization, what really just struck me was how peaceful and quiet it was at El Tajin. There were no crowds at all, and I could just hear the wind and the tropical birds. In particular, there were loads of Montezuma Oropandolas, which are quite common to Veracruz, but to me they just sound very exotic, making an almost alien sound. To get back to the city, I had to take a shared taxi, in which I was not so subtly trying to film an indigenous man before making it back to my hotel. I'm in Poza Rica, which is the small city that I decided to stay tonight. Uh, it's not a particularly beautiful place. It's not like a heritage town or uh, a pueblo magico, but it is interesting. Let's uh, take a look here. 
So yeah, oil is an important thing here. We're close to the Gulf of Mexico where there are large oil reserves. And actually in this city, you can see um, little oil wells. Like you can see a football field or something and then right next to it is, is one of those uh, oil derricks. What do you call them? I don't even know. Oil derricks. They're all over town. And uh, even saw like a wellness center and it had a logo of a oil well. I don't know what's up with that. But yeah, if you look around, there's quite a lot of interesting things to see. I'm gonna try and get some breakfast before my bus goes. I'm gonna have a quick huevos on churros. Because I don't have much time, I need to go to the bus station, but... Uh, I need to fill up first. So it's gonna be a five hour journey and I don't wanna be hungry. I have made it to wonderful Jalapa, which is a city that maybe you haven't heard of before, except that you definitely have, because what is from here? The jalapeno peppers. Jalapeno simply meaning from Jalapa. But the connection is not immediately obvious because the city is spelled with an X and the peppers are spelled with a J. Also, they don't really trade on their claim to fame here at all. There's no jalapeno museum, there's no jalapeno souvenir shops or anything. In fact, the company that was here that um, made pickled peppers in this specific way for the first time, it went out of business a couple of decades ago. Uh, I thought it was still a fun fact to mention. Uh, Jalapa is the uh, administrative capital of Veracruz and there are many things to see and do here, so let's go and explore it. Jalapa is a city built on several hills, so it has a lot of haphazard streets and it can be quite a chaotic and busy city. However, it's also known for its many beautiful parks. This is Los Tacajetas Park, which is beautiful. Such a wonderful little jungle in the middle of the city. There are turtles here. There are huge fishes in the ponds. It's a wonderful place. Hello, buddy. That's a big one. A real chunker. Okay, my taxi driver does not have change for like 10 bucks. So he's trying to change it there. Whoops. <laughs> they forced him to buy a drink, which actually is giving me ideas. I'm, I'm pretty thirsty myself. I'm gonna see what they have here. I got myself something that they call Jamaica water here. And it's, uh, it's kind of like iced tea with uh, hibiscus in it. So it's kind of like a little bit cranberry flavored. It's very refreshing. Jalapa has what is said to be a very impressive anthropological museum, second only to the one in Mexico City. And I always love to learn about the pre-Columbian civilizations that were here before the Spanish arrived. So I'm gonna go check it out. This museum is just exquisite and I spent several hours here working my way through all the exhibits. They're filled with stunning artifacts from several different civilizations. The building itself is beautiful and just filled with light. Such a gorgeous museum. I wouldn't say that it's redundant at all to go to the one in Mexico City and to this one. Because the one in Mexico City gives you more of an overview of all these civilizations. Of, um, of Mexico, whereas here the focus is more on the civilizations in the center of Mexico and of course the ones that were near Veracruz, among them the Olmecs, which are quite famous for their huge head statues. So it's a very, very impressive museum. If you see only one thing in Jalapa, make sure it's this museum. It's just incredibly well put together and it's one of the best museums I've visited in Mexico. The 
is such a nice city to just kind of walk around in and see what is there. Travel doesn't always have to be about continuous sightseeing, you know. Sometimes it's just nice to take a stroll through town, see what's going on. It's really lively in Jalapa. This part of the city is called Los Lagos for obvious reasons. And during the morning, this is an area where people are like jogging and it's super quiet and it's, it's really nice. And now, later in the day, it's almost like a fun fair atmosphere because there's stuff to do for kids. There's like people are painting things. There's all kinds of street food. I'm reminded that yesterday I was here as well and I had something, I ate something that at first was like, I, I hated it. I was like, it's not what I expected at all. But then within a minute or so, I became a complete convert and I loved it. And I'm thinking of having it again. <laughs> so I'm gonna seek this out and I will tell you what it is in a second. It's mango ice cream. I ordered it thinking it'd be sweet. And actually, it's kind of salty. <laughs> it's salty and it's spicy as well. And when I think the first bite, it's like, oh my god, mm, what a dish. Like, it's not what you expect at all. And then you realize it's freaking delicious. I don't know how. I don't know how if this is so delicious. But yeah, salty ice cream. It's weird really good. <laughs> Alright, time for a little breakfast. Um, I'm here in this restaurant which overlooks the city park. What a wonderful place to wake up a little bit and have your first coffee. I got on my way to Chico, a town 40 minutes south of Jalapa. It is one of the 100 or so towns in Mexico with the designation Pueblo Mágico, in recognition of their heritage and culture. But before exploring the town, I went on a little hike to a nearby waterfall. Look at this house. We'd love to live here. It's funny, you never know who you might end up talking to. I was speaking for a long, long time actually with this uh, family, this American family who moved to the town here uh, fairly recently. Uh, they went to the town here uh, last year, they fell in love with it, and I guess so now it's March. In September, they decided to move here. By December, they had sold their house in LA, and uh, yeah, they've been living here for about two months now. And it, from the sounds of it, they're just loving it because there's fresh air, there's all these uh, coffee farms around here. And apparently there's a little expat community. They said they knew about 50 different people from different countries that, uh, that live in this random village in Veracruz. How amazing. And uh, yeah, they thought it would be good for their uh, son as well to live more in nature and to uh, grow up in a different culture. So it's really nice to listen to their story and find out how they ended up here. Chico is such a delightful town with so many colorful houses. It's in a coffee region and so it's known for its coffee roasters. And it's locally famous for a dish known as mole, which usually comes from Oaxaca or Puebla, but they have their own take on it here can have a dozen or more ingredients that are slow cooked. It's definitely one of my favorite dishes in Mexico. Uh, super good. Nice complex flavor. A bit chocolatey. My <laughs> ability to describe food is failing me again. Okay, an aperitivo and a digestivo from this town have just appeared. And uh, a photo book from the place. Um, 
this guy was like, are you a YouTuber? Let me get you some stuff. <laughs> so this is very kind. Mm. It's like a cherry liquor or something like that. Very good. My journey doesn't end here. In the next video, I will be visiting the volcanic lake of Catamaco, one of the prettiest and most calming places I've been to in all of Mexico. So join me in part two, where I will also share travel tips for Veracruz.